After we discuss about the special case scenario for the list of the stack, now let us take a look of another special case for the list, which is queues. Queue exists in our daily life. It is a line for everything that we see in our day. A line of a person waiting to check out at a supermarket, a line of person waiting to purchase a ticket for the movie theater, a line of planes waiting to take off, and a line of vehicle at toll booths. This is going to be very different from the stack because stack shows some spatial scenarios which is probably very useful for computers. It is going to be the last in first out for Q, just like our daily life. It's the first in first out. So, because this is a first in first out, unlike stack, we have two directions need to check. One is the front of the queue, the other one is the back of the queue. The front of the queue is called the front, which is where we try to deal with such as a customer, a plane, or a car to pay its toll. The back is where we add more items that we try to look at. So the front is where we remove the items and the back is where we added the items. Unlike stack, stack has only one location. Either we push onto the stack or we pop onto the stack. And that is the same location. Q has two areas that we need to take care of. Therefore, just like the ADTs that we have seen so far, for the Q ADTs, we need to create a constructor depending on how we want to implement it. We need to create a space or prepare for the Q to operate. The empty function is again check whether or not it is an empty Q. We then need to do the in Q. This is the word that we use to add the item to the back. DQ, which means that we want to remove the item from the front. Before we remove the item, we probably want to take a look of it. We want to print it out. We want to deal with the calculations of the items that we're about to do the DQ. So we can do the front function, which means that we want to retrieve the value of the element from the front, of course. Display indicating you want to print it out all the items that you have usually is from the front to the end of your queue. Just like stack, we have three different implementations. First of all, we want to talk about array implementation, which might be the most straightforward method that you can think about. Then we want to look into the linked list. At this time, linked list would be slightly different from what you have seen so far about the linked list. Because previously, when you look into the linked list, you have one pointer to indicating where's the beginning or where's the top of your linked list. Now, the linked list has two directions. So you need two linked lists to starting with the front and to goes to the end of it. Finally, we will look into the vector implementation. Surprisingly, it is very similar to the vector implementation of the stack. We just need to introduce one more, one extra uh, functions that you will need to see. So let's start looking into the array implementation. For array, consider the array that you would create to store the information. You have two variables to say where is the front element and where is the back element? So they are looking stored for the indexes. Additional variables needed. There are two of those, unlike stack, because you only have one item, you only need to look into the top of the stack. So you can see that what we need is create a space for the array, set up my from equals to whatever values you want. You can do null and you can make my back equal to null as well. But we actually want to do something pretty interesting. So if we take a look at this, in the beginning, 
Another way of doing that is set both front and back at the same location, which is zero. As long as front and back point at the same location, that means this stack is empty. Because what front trying to say is that where is my first element? My back is trying to say where is my next element going to be? So my first element equals to my next element going to be, it is empty. And that is the idea of saying when front and back are at the same location, it is empty. We will see additional information in the next uh, example. Saying that we do that operation and we want to do in Q70, any numbers will be fine. So what we are going to do over here is you can see my front does not change at all but we change my back to the next location, indicating the next available location is going to be 70. Think about this. If after in Q70, I do an operation which we call DQ, then when we do DQ, all we need to do is that we move my from to the next location. In this case, when we move my front to the next location, front and back are point at the same location, and that gives you the capability of seeing an empty queue. So that we don't, simply, when we try to do the in queue, we're going to move my back one position. If we're going to do the DQ, we move my front to the next location. And that is the basic logic of how we will be able to do the Q implementation. Let's take a look of more examples. Reality is it's not that simple. It has a little bit catch of it, but it's the general idea like this. If we, after in Q70 and we do in Q80, so we will be able to put 80 into the next available location, move my back to the next location. When we do in Q50, we put 50 into my, my back location and move my back to the next location. Like I said, the general idea is as simple as this. Now, if we do DQ, we simply move my front to the next location, and that is indicating uh, this is the queue that we have. And we do DQ one more time, then we will move my front to the next location. If we do DQ one more time, my front will move to the index of three. At this time, my front equals to my back equal to three, we will know it is going to be an empty queue. So that is the general idea. But why did I say it is not as straightforward as it is? The catch is this. Take a look. Every time we do the queue, we need to move my front to the next location. It's saying that we at this time we try to do the in queue one more item, one more item, and one more item. After three more in queues, we actually use all the space that we have. That means all the elements in the front are wasted. We are not able to use them anymore. Although there are additional spaces over there that we reserve, there is no way for us to go back over there and then reuse those spaces. Of course, when this happening, we have one choice of shifting everything to the beginning and then continue use the rest of the elements. However, you know the shift operation is very costly. That's not something that we want to do. And therefore, we want to twist your mind a little bit, considering what we want to look into as a, what we call a circular queue concept. So you see that the previous examples, if we continue doing the operation, adding one more item, 90, and then do the in queue of 60. So after one more item, then it is already full. So we will waste some space, which means that how many DQs that you operated, you wasted how many spaces. Then the idea is this will walk off the end of the array like I said, it's possible when this happening, we can shift the array, but we don't have to do that, actually. All we need to do is that we change our mind. Instead of thinking array is one direction, we can make them link together 
so that we after we use the space in the end the next element that we want to insert is that go all the way back to the beginning and then continue doing the operation so it forms the idea of what we call a circular queue how is that possible how do we make it happen okay this is actually a very small trick that we are able to use and then we will be able to make it possible okay so when we try to define an array we will specify the capacity in Q increase my back using mod operator the Q increase my front using mod operator so by adding the mod operator we can make the circular queue possible before we move into that one let me ask you okay before we use the mod operator to enable the circular queue I want to remind you what is the mod operator because based on my experiences half of the students forget about the mod operator so what is a mod operator operator representing by a mod sign percentage sign gives the remainder of the division of two values for example if we simply use 11 divided by 3 the value is 9 but it's not totally dividable it will it will equals to 9 remaining 2 so what mod operator try to get is not the value that you get as an integer instead you get the remainder so again 11 divided by 3 equals to 3 remaining 2 so after the mod operator if we do 11 mod 3 we get the remainder part 15 if we use 15 divided by 5 you get 3 remaining 0 so if we do 15 mod 5 the remainder that we get is going to be 0 because that is the remainder that we have after the operation in fact the one that we used in our circular queue is more like this one if we use 6 mod 15 what we get over here is the original value think about this if we keep increase saying that the, the Q capacity is 15 when we use six elements and then we do the in Q so six will move to the next one seven seven mod 15 still get seven seven after we do one more in Q will be eight so eight mod 15 will still equal to eight so they are not going to change anything until until you walk to the very last element think about this 15 capacity will give you the index from 0 to 14 when 14 want to move to the next location you will do 14 plus 1 and after the mod operation that is the only chance that it will change the value 14 plus 1 mod 15 will give you 0 and 0 is exactly the index in the beginning of the queue that is how it operated so that actually make it possible to do a circular operation in this case you can see that when we try to do my front and my back both of them are equal to 0 it is the empty situation now when we have my front uh, point at the original location after we do the in Q 70 my back will move to the next location when we do that we use 0 plus 1 mod the whole capacity which is 6 in this example so 0 plus 1 equals to 1 1 mod 6 still equals to 1 so it will not change anything it will happen all the time every time you increment by 1 you mod the operator just for the case that you are actually walk to the end of it and then move back to the beginning and that would be true for in Q as well as the Q so you take a look of this one once we add one more item 1 plus 1 equals to 2 2 mod 6 still equals to 2 so it's not changing anything this is not changing anything it's even the front would be the same you move from index of 0 to 1 1 mod 6 still get 1 so you are not changing anything 
and for this example the same this example the same even this example this example is the same the only difference is that when we try to enqueue after the enqueue 60 we enqueue say 100 what will happen is that 100 will come here my back will need to move to the next location and what's the next location it will be 5 plus 1 mod 6 and you will go all the way back to 0 that is the way of how we will be able to use the mod operator to enable the circular queue concept of course take if we look into this example again saying that when i try when we try to do the dq my front will move to the next location if we do one more dq my front will move to the next location and if we do dq one more time my front will move over here indicating that it is a empty situation so we our front and back point at the same location still gives us an empty queue situation the only catch that we have to deal one more time is that if we do in queue one item my back will goes to index of zero if i do in queue one more time my back will come to index of one which we still have one space however if we do in queue one more time what is going to happen my back will comes to the same location of my front which they will point at the same location it will give you a empty situation however it is full so that is the last thing we need to handle again the only trick part is the vector double doubling because the queue items are necessary stored in the array of index zero and the continuity of the wraparound must be maintained therefore most straightforward maintain front and back if an item were stored in the last position and the in queue occurred my back will increment by one giving the same value as my front however my front equal to my back indi indicates the queue is empty so in this case we will get confused either it's empty or it's full there are many ways that we can handle this like i say in computer science there are many many different ways of handling things we can add a flag you can try to check whether or not it's empty uh, or use a for loop to do several things however we want to look make it as simple as possible so we may avoid this situation by maintaining one empty position so my front will never equal to my back unless the queue is empty what this trying to say is that if when you still have one location left and then you still want to do the in queue after this operation my back will equal to my front when that's happening i'm going to say even though there's one more space available i'm going to declare a full Q situation so prevented it from doing the in queue and let us take a look of the code to see how is that possible so in the array implementation constructor very simple create an array set the capacity my front equal to my back equal to zero empty function as long as front and back are the same location it is empty we already make sure of it we avoid the full situation by sacrifice one space the front operation if it's not as long as it's not empty then printed out array of wherever my front looks at and that is the front operation now take a look of the in queue the first part is exactly what we said to use one space sacrifice one space to make sure full and empty situation are distinguishable before we move it we create a new variable called new back and then we try to see if we allow this in queue to happen so my back plus one mod queue capacity what is this new back will be what is this new back index will be as long as this new back is not going to equal to my front then we will be able to add a value into my back's location and move my back to the next location which is equal to new back so this is the general scenario however if new back 
is going to equal to my front, indicating if I allow you to do the in queue, then we will generate a situation that we don't want. Then we just simply say, hey, queue is full. I'm not going to allow you to do this in queue. This is the simple and straightforward, easy understandable way to do the in queue. To do the dequeue is even simpler. As long as queue is not empty, we would set my front to the next location. How do we do the next location? As simple as my front plus one mod the queue capacity. If it's empty, then you are not supposed to do the dequeue. This is the code for the array implementation. Let's take a look of a simple ex example, and then we would have a fully understand of this operation. Constructor make array five, so we have a capacity of five. Front and back equal to zero, exactly like we see over here. If we do the in queue of 10, first of all, we're going to see new back will equals to back plus one mod five. Five is the queue capacity. Then it's not go the mod operator is not going to do anything. Back will go to the next location, finding out the new back is equals to here. Now, since new back is one, front is zero, they are not equal to each other. Let's totally do this. So we can put 10 into where B uh, back index add. So we can put 10 over there, move back to new back. And that is the first in queue operation. Now let's take a look of the next one in Q5. We do the same thing. New back will go to the next location. New back is not going to equals to front. So it's fine. We can put five in here and then move back to new back. If we do in Q one more time, you see that new back will move to the next location and then it's new back is not equal to front. So we have the 15 stored over there, move back to the new back location. Totally fine. If Z one more in Q, what's going to happen? Same thing, back will move to, uh, the new back will equals to back plus one mod five. Uh, it's not equal, new back is not equal to front. We can put a value over there, move back to new back. So this, so far, everything goes well. However, you can see that the situation of we have capacity of five and we use four of those already. We are not supposed to allow one more in queue. So if we see one more in queue, what is happening is new back will equals to back, which is four plus one, that's five, mod five will give us a value of zero. At this time, you see that front and back, front and new back are equal to each other. So we are not going to allow in queue to be operated. So we sacrifice this space to make sure when front and back are the same location, it is an empty situation. To do DQ, the same thing, we just simply move from to the next location. So you can see that since from, uh, since Q is not empty, from is not equal to back. So we have that maintained the operation. We move from to the next location, which is plus one mod five. It is possible that when from goes over here and then you do it one more DQ, it can go back over the beginning of the queue. So you can see that one last detail I want to mention is that when we move from to the next location, pay attention. In the code, we did not really remove this value. Of course, like I said, you can write the code before you move your from, you can null the space over there. That's totally fine. However, what I want to show you is that once we move front over here, the, based on the code that we write, if we want to do the front function, we will print five. If I want to print it out, uh, the display function, we will go from the index of front until the back index printed out all three values. We will not touch this one. And when we try to do the in queue or when we try to do the DQ, we will just keep maintaining the operation. This will be overwrite when we have a in queue goes all, all the way over here. So remove it or not does not matter because your front and back depict where is the area of your queue. That is about the array implementation. Follow up for another video. We'll look into the linked list implementation.